glass, if you need your windshield replaced or repaired, Tiny and Sons Glass, 1-888-64-TINIES. Just call. Thank you. We have been fortunate to use our separate breaker in the year after that we receive it, which kind of creates almost a an extraordinarily conflict in the district. So if somebody were to move in, there would be a change in the situation. We have kind of a, a place to hold on of money to, to fund that. Next year, we will be using the money in the same year that we receive it, which is a change in how we operate um, for the past couple of years or so. It's seen some things as a breaker. Um, we also, as I said, if we decide what full day kindergarten, we'll be funding the additional teacher out of the balance of that revolving fund. Um, we made some additional reductions in staff. Um, so there was some places and pockets throughout the district where the numbers of elementary classrooms were 19 or 20, which are in a, a budget like this and nice to have. Um, so we did go back through and take some of those additional positions um, at the elementary level as well as some positions at the secondary level. We have a small um, what would be junior class next year, and so we're able to realize some reductions in staff there. We are proposing a 7 to 12 guidance structure. Um, obviously, with fewer kids, there's it's, it's slightly more driven, but it would also be a change in how the program is delivered 7 to 12. Um, so that's something we'll talk more about at our upcoming meetings, um, and then some support staff. So up until that point, that is the equivalent of about 11.6 positions, um, which is a pretty significant decrease in staff. Sorry, um, we also have, with no um, kindergarten buses to run, there is a savings of about $25,000. We have a line in our budget that we use to fund textbooks and curriculum for, dis for district-wide programs. Um, you know, if we're going to adopt a math textbook, we come out of that fund, we've reduced that line by $50,000. We've also um, taken a look at losing spending in both athletics and extracurricular activities. Um, with all of those reductions to date, it leaves us with about $100,000 um, to come up with. I think there has been some conversation at this level about some additional health insurance savings, um, so we did plug that in um, as well, leaving us with about $24,000. We are optimistic that the Chapter 70 number will be higher. We're also understanding that other things may shift as well, um, so it's still a work in progress. Under the budget, the first out of this, the last item, solar plan utility offset. Is that, uh, and that's based on the usage of the school's one point seven. That would be 67%. Oh, okay. So that number is that number is right. where that's coming from. Right. Thank you. And after talking with um, both Ed and Mike and Mr. Chow, it seems like that might be, that might be a conservative number. We may see savings greater than that. And so where we're at next is, as Mike said, the school committee meets tomorrow night. We have talked as a committee about everything except um, the bottom portion of that last slide, which is the um, reduction in athletics, extra fifth workings, and transportation for about thirty-eight thousand dollars. The rest of it we talked about at the committee level. Um, we have um, Senator Di and Representative Cutler coming in on April third. The school committee invites them in every year. Um, there have been healthier conversations over the past two years, I would say, or so about. Um, us actually bringing solutions to the table and asking for things such as reimbursement for vocational transportation, um, a cap on the increase that uh, special ed or vocational schools can have in their tuition. Um, just like, really, I, I was a solution oriented, so I think we're, we have high expectations of them coming back to us with some, some movement on some of those things. Um, as I said before, the House Ways and Means budget comes out on April 18th. We would expect that the Chapter 70 number would rise from 20 to $25 a student at that point. That's about an additional $14,000 for us. <coughs> Part of our process includes a public budget here, and that is slated to happen on April 24th. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to get on questions? I have a question. If you could just speak to the public's information of uh, special ed costs. Uh, they're, they're very high. Uh, but it's incumbent upon the, the town to place students in a program that's uh, suitable for their needs. And uh, we don't have those programs here in town. So if you just 
uh, broaden that line item for everyone. Sure. So the philosophy with the special student is always to keep them in districts and part of this community for as long as possible. Obviously, that's a little bit easier at the elementary levels. Um, we tend to have students that transition to an out of district placement in the, the later elementary grades, fourth, fifth, sixth um, grade for that. And at that point, you're finding a school that is uniquely representative of the needs of that student. Um, so we have you know, one kid here, and one kid here, and one kid here. Um, there are students whose needs require residential placements, and that means that they're 24 7. Um, so in addition to the educational component that's of the day, there's also surround care for those students. So those placements can be anywhere from 150,000 to 350,000 students. The number of students that we have out of district is pretty similar to how it's been in the past. Um, the difference is the level of need of those students is different. We have more students who have that kind of back and forth. Um, and with special ed, it's kind of a wild card. Anybody can move in over the summer, and we would be responsible for whatever placement they were in when they left their last district. Um, so those are kind of like the shoppers that you get in July or August. So, so two other things to, to note on that. Um, one, some of the reasons why we see the higher, more expensive students needing to go out of placement will be staying in case there is because the administration has brought programs in house. Um, and that has lowered the costs, also hit a big, big piece of what we believe morally we want those students to be educated within the town in which they live. Um, so we think that that is a benefit not only to the student but as well as um, the district. The second piece of that, um, the second item I'll add is, as Aaron spoke to, we've asked uh, uh, our state rep and our state senator a year ago, and we reiterated that this year, to ask them to legislate a cap on expenditures, or I'm sorry, tuition increases by vocational education programs, but also special education programs. The reason why we ask for that is, while we are responsible for staying within our budget constraints, they're not. They charge a tuition, they set the tuition rate, and they, nobody determines whether that rate or their budget is within the means of the people paying it, which are the taxpayers of the cities and towns that send the students to these programs. So we just asked if we're in a situation where we're looking at half of our, half of our funding is increasing at a very generous rate for the town, and we're very you know, uh, thankful for that, but the other piece of our revenue comes from the Commonwealth, and the rate of which that is increasing is very good. So by that kind of mix of, of not being able to, you know, to, to fully fund, we're taking money out of other programs to fund these programs, and we're just asking the Commonwealth if they will have those um, those organizations have to look at the, look at the same budget constraints that we do. So. The other piece about special ed that's really important too is the transportation piece. So there are times where students are attending a school where the, the cost to transport them there and back is almost as much as the tuition, if not more. Um, that is something that doesn't figure into the formula for circuit breaker and what you get reimbursed for. So we do talk about the only for legislation to have that part of the formula. Um, and the same is true with some of our vocational schools. So we commit for the vocational education program and we're responsible for the vocational education as well. We have students in North Bay, um, you know, we have a bus full of students going to the South Shore Tech this year. So all of those pieces are out of state. What other questions or concerns do you have for both? Where we are, what we're asking for, what we've done so far. Making the out of district placement, we have students that are going to South Shore or both of them, they're going to North Bay. Are they going to by their choice or by my IEP? Their choice. So we pick up the transportation funding on the Correct. So the reason why we're asking for reimbursement of transportation is that the Commonwealth uh, reimburses regional transportation and then. For, so Bridge Enhancing gets money from the state as part of their Chapter 70 for um, reimbursement for their transportation for, for the high school. Um, and other regional districts do the same. We're, we're saying that vocational education is the ultimate regionalization. And if we're sending students to Norfolk Aggie, if we're sending them to South Shore of Tech, in our case also Silver Lake, uh, some of our vocational students go, we should be able to I'll be eligible for some of that same reimbursement that they're using for um, regional schools. Is it because there's no reimbursement available? Because it used to be the aid follows the students. <laughs> the, so, the, so the aid does, but the reimbursement, the action the aid stays within the district. But the problem we have is that the transportation isn't 
is completely separate. There's no aid for transportation. When we were on the Silver Lake Committee many years ago, uh, Silver Lake would get funding from the state for transportation under the Regional School Committee uh, reimbursement. We do not have that within vocational education, and we're asking for that because, again, those students are going to what we consider a regional school district for vocational education. And we've done things in the past, right? So we've used our own buses to transport in some cases to try and save some money. However, where you have, we've actually Aaron's done a great job pooling or consolidating with other towns to share a bus rather than us sending six or eight students to a certain school. If we're sending six or eight, Hanson sending, or the Hanson sending six or eight, so the Lake sending six or eight, well, let's put them all on the same bus going and it reduces all of our costs. So, you know, Erin did that many years ago when, when she was our business manager. We <coughs> saved this money, however, we have no more of those bullets to fire to keep reducing our costs. So we're asking for some relief on that. I don't imagine you have a sort of a uh, at a point where you can't um, pick a food number five there in the morning. Right, so that local heavy bus is very early. And then this room's definitely busy. It's the biggest parking lot at about 6 a.m.? 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. And then it goes back in the long day. We're trying to deny anyone that education at all. I don't want that to, to come across. What we're trying to figure out is how do we make that most, for, first of all, most beneficial to them, most economical to the town, so it doesn't impact the students who are staying. And that's when we can ask for solutions, because two years ago, um, we kept getting asked, well, instead of telling us what your problem is, bring us our solution. So last year we came and voted with several solutions. Uh, we followed that up with a letter earlier this year. Was this is calendar year up. Or this, okay, so the school year was last fall, um, asking the same things, and we're going to ask again the same things in April. Okay. Last uh, <coughs> back to the, uh, the full day kindergarten. And if you could speak to the reimbursement, uh, will that last in the future? Sure. So they become the, the full day kids become part of your foundation enrollment. So it's the basis of the program. So they be considered right now any student that's enrolled in the full day program at North is considered a half a student in the formula. And next year and for every year moving forward, they'd be a one. Again, thank you for the audience. Sure. Just as a, um, for the, for the public's information, I know. Every year I ask this when you guys come to work. Um, you, you touched on it that there's an increase in the vote pack, et cetera, and it's much faster than any other increase. But it's also much higher base already. Uh, the amount that we spend for a vote pack or a Navy student is significantly higher than what we spend on an average high school student here. You might want to elaborate on it. Yes. So our per pupil for a student in district is about twelve thousand um, dollars. The price point for a, a notebook and a student is about twenty four thousand um, dollars. A single with tech student is teetering around <coughs> seventeen thousand dollars. Silver Lake is a less expensive option. Um, it's about ten thousand dollars for a regular student. Any student that requires special ed services with an IEP is that in addition to those services. So we have some students. Um, that are out there whose tuition was about $32,000. Plus, the state aid that goes yeah. with it because. <laughs> the, so, the, so the, the state aid that we're getting, which is the over $7,000 per student, goes with that student. So it's it's costing us for Silver Lake that a net of net of ten, however, is actually a seventeen thousand dollar expenditure. It is ten thousand for the for what we pay and seven thousand to give or take for the for the aid that goes with that. So we're not getting the aid and it being only a net expenditure, if that makes any sense. But it's a it's a us paying and the state aid going with that student. Well, I don't know if you have any Thank you. All right, moving on to our board action The board has two budget options before them. 
decision must be made on the list for the option to be and the warrant by the town meeting. Option one is a balanced financial budget. The level of finance my name is Fred and Mr. Benton. And there are several articles that will then be brought forth for both position of the proposition to the library. And option two is an alternate budget. And these figures include the articles that the board has indicated there is support for additional funding. So these articles are the crime and the work of Chair, would you like me to explain that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, we have two budgets. Now, one includes, one is balanced, and it does not include three main components uh, that would cause the budget to be unbalanced or upside down, as they say, by $708,000. So, so the, the budget that is being recommended to the board is the balanced budget as of right now. That includes, to the chagrin of some in the, in the audience, uh, you know, some free cash, uh, you know, from FY17. Uh, but that, the fact of the matter is, it, it's going to be needed uh, in this balanced budget. The second part of that is three items: fire, police, and DPW, that total seven hundred and eight thousand dollars in additional funds, and therefore. That's why before you, you have two budgets. What's being recommended is the balanced budget with the three outstanding items going before the board to be discussed as override items, to be at town meeting as separate articles, and also on the ballot. All right, thank you for that And of course, we have those kind of count. Okay. I have a question. So I've asked and I'll leave it alone. The at the end of what you just explained, the three items that are potentially separate items, which would be separate ballot items, would they be separate items on the ballot, individual items, or would it be a ballot with all three items combined? That <laughs> is the next topic. Okay. Of the board. Thank you. Are you going up? Are you going up? Thank you. Thank you. So as Ed said, we have um, a three hundred thousand dollar. We have a balanced budget um, with available funds. We're somewhat uncomfortable with the use of one-time money. Support the budget, but uh, I think it would be worth a little bit of a choice. The police department is roughly asking for the addition of two new officers, and they're asking that an additional cruiser be built into the budget. The, that, the cost of that is $204,000. The fire department is asking for um, two. Um, there's some discussion of six, but the cost of two. Um, of paying and equipping two new firefighters, uh, paramedics, would be 204000 as well. And DPW is asking for $300,000 that we also don't have uh, sufficient revenue to pay for. Um, and we currently have a permanent paving program to add to our $550,000 State and I anticipate there's been some discussion back and forth that there will be two columns on this uh, fiscal 19 budget article uh, this year. One would be town manager, town administrator recommended, the other column would be um, a contingent budget on successful plan for it. has said that what we have to decide in the very near future is 
how they're structured with the ballot. If you choose to put those um, up front, you won't have to override in front of the public. All right, thank you for that explanation. Uh, did you have a suggestion on this document? I suggest to the board that um, one article, one question, I'm sorry. Um, we historically uh, only had one budget. I think if you split things up, split things up, you have the potential for the partners to compete with each other. And um, that really cannot get, um, not be beneficial really to anyone. Um, if you were one town, if all the departments work together, I can see um, the potential for departments being pitted against each other. But that said, it really is up to you and it really is no bottom. But I would prefer to have one question. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think that was fine. We talked about this a lot, and uh, we believe that uh, one, one ballot question would be in the best interest of, uh, of the organization in the town. But like I said, that is a separate question from what you have before you right now because we want the board to uh, to vote on what budget they want to see for article number three, which is the budget itself. Can you suggest option one or the two options? Yeah, I think we would like to have a balanced budget before the before the town and that three articles um, would be at town meeting and they would represent what would be going on the ballot uh, the following Saturday. So, so, if we go into town meeting with a warrant and a balanced budget, and just you know, I'm very what you said, but I just want to say it and say it myself and make sure I understand it and maybe some other folks uh, will understand it this way too. We go to town meeting with uh, a balanced budget. Uh, it's, not, it's not the best budget for all the departments. Uh, they, they want and need more. Uh, and then we'll have three separate added on questions to the warrant. One would be the DPW question, seeking uh, highway funding, permanent highway funding, yes? Yes. And uh, the police and the fire department, are those permanent, seeking permanent, or is it permanent funding uh, articles as well? So, so those are the three separate questions at town meeting floor to be debated and discussed at town meeting floor. And then if those three pass, then it's on to ballot questions. And then we're going to discuss that in a moment. But the ballot questions, are those a single lump in or are they an hour apart menu? Um, okay, I just want to make sure uh, I understood where we are now. The assumption that we are as employees that you do not want to have a special mm -hmm. election. The assumption we're making is that you want this to be part of the annual election, so you're going to pay for the election. Mm -hmm. And if you follow that assumption and, and um, take that route, the ballot has to be approved and printed well before town meeting. The, the, the hand up is not up. The town clerk has to have the ballot questions before uh, town council recommends March 26th, which is next Monday. They technically have one more week. Built in as a cushion, but the warrant itself isn't the problem, it's a ballot question. But you have to know what you're going to do to get to the ballot question. The warrant itself doesn't get signed until April 25th. So the other avenue, which we're not recommending, is to see what town meeting does and then have a special election to town meeting. And that's $12,000, $15,000. Okay. 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 Any questions from the public on that? Please go ahead. Um, does your two hundred thousand for the two officers and the two firemen include all benefits as yes. well as equipment and yes. everything else? Yeah. It's okay. Thank you. Contingent. Contingent. Yes. We build in a, um, a provision for increased enrollment, so that's covered. <clears throat> And the retirement keeps in, the assessment keeps in the 
That's a question. Uh, Mike, if we go the way that you just described it, with a balanced budget, three articles, they'll be discussed separately. Uh, how is that going to differ from the contingent budget where we include that money in already? Well, two approaches. Um, I prefer to deal with <coughs> everything under the operating budget article. I have the motion that Sabrina and I write to be read by advisory, say um, $708,000 in contingent on successful property and program. We'll put it up at home. And um, when we get the police fire and DPW, we'll have whatever it means, $3 million and then $200,000 in addition contingent on the two month program. That way, town meeting deals with the budget all at once. The other way <coughs> is you have to plan for someone to, after we deal with the budget, which is usually the first item off the bat, you have to plan for someone to introduce a motion that those other three articles be brought forward to be dealt with right away. And I just don't think it flows, because if that motion doesn't carry, then hypothetically I'm going to end up being on the DPW and um, on the other end. Well, I think that appeals to me the way you just described it. Uh, everything would be done at the same time, and the people in the audience would be able to follow the whole thing and understand, hopefully, why the uh, department heads that will be speaking on the additional money over and above what the balance budget is will have a chance to present their case in detail. And the people that are there will get a chance to hear it. And like myself, I hope they will vote in favor of that. And then I'm hopeful that there may be 200 people at town meeting that will hear this whole story and will understand it. The people that are going to go to the election polls the following Saturday, I'm hoping that we're going to have some information that we're going to put out to the public so that you don't have to actually be at town meeting to understand what the issue is and what's being recommended. I know we'd like to have a thousand people at town meeting, but I'm saying 200 because let's be realistic, that's all we get. So they're going to hear the whole story, those 200 people, and hopefully they're going to vote yes. But the people that go to the polls, we've got to get that information out to the rest of those folks. We as employees have to be very careful, um, especially the communities on the way. Of course, the fire chief and the police chief can advocate, the DPW commissioners can advocate, but as employees, we have to be very careful. So we can give all the information in the world, but we can't really trust the opinion. The board of selectmen can, yes, as they will trust the Yeah. Right. So it really is not trying to pass it. Well, you know, just to take another minute, when I said I'm in favor of, these, of this override for all three people. And I'm in favor of it because I've been a selectman here for nine years. And, you know, you can only take not spending money that, I know if you don't have it, you can't spend it. But if you, if you believe in something that's in the best interest of the town, and it's going to cost more money and more real estate taxes, I think it's our job to put that proposal forth. Now, we can't guarantee it's going to get approved. Yeah. But just not to do anything is not right. And we've been putting this off for a long time because we're trying to keep the cost for the people in this town down, including myself. My taxes are going to go up too. But I think the cause is worth it and it's overdue. All three. Thank you. Yeah, Mike, I'm sorry, Linda, you want to go first? Um, Louis brought up a good point about raising taxes. Do you have an estimate of what the average taxpayer it will cost the taxpayer? Well, you saved me asking a question. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I do somewhere on all this paper. Um, $708,000. Estimate. Estimation only. Um, with that 28 cents in the tax rate. The average home, I think, was 376 and nobody said we assessed at 376000 I understand nobody's average. Um, but that would... The 28 cent increase would add $75 um, for that value of house. Seven hundred eight thousand. Seven seven hundred eight more in the tax levy would add twenty eight cents to the tax rate, and that would increase the bill for three hundred seventy six thousand dollar house in Miami. <laughs> Mike, just so I'm seeing this the way you're seeing it, and I, I'm not sure that we seem to think that it may be. Maybe. Um, you picture, you know, if we get through town meeting with a uh, positive picture, you, you picture two ballots, one being the general ballot um, that we would have under any circumstance, and a second ballot with three questions on it. So when a person is in the vote, they get two bits of paper, and that way you can order them ahead of time. I'm anticipating one ballot. Well, and I was going to say that is the next topic up because there's still a town manager uh, question as well. So you're going to bump over, and I bet it'll fit on one document is questionable as to how many questions the board select. And that's an a la carte option, which is the next item up. Well, I see it as being one question. Uh, for the seven hundred thousand dollars, because to divide it into three is going to divide the departments against each other, and you know the town will get divided as, as well, in my opinion. So um, I, I would see it as one question. Um, you know that it either all goes or none of it goes. But I think letting the voters make the decision is the best decision we can make because they're um, generally more well informed than people to be credit for. If I agree, if, if the question was in our business, I wouldn't be able to see that. Uh, could, quick question on that. I was at first of the opinion that we have a, a menu with three, with three choices. Now, I'm not so sure. If we have one vote for all three, We've got to have language in there that clearly spells out what a person is going to vote for. We've got a couple of examples here in our packet. And one doesn't really, in my opinion, explain exactly what it's for. The other one is a little better. So I would like to see us, if we go with a single ballot question, that we spend some time developing that so that it gives all the information possible. Yeah. If I can just put in on that uh, a little bit for, for the for Lou and the public. Uh, the question itself, the exact question, needs to be a precise <laughs> question according to town council. But the explanation beneath that, the verb is explaining what, what you're voting on, is more to what you're alluding to, Lou. The, the, the question itself has to be a, a specific item uh, outlined by, by, by law that town council has helped us write and has given us two examples. Uh, but for clarity, for the public sake, as, as you're looking for, as we're all looking for, there should be an explanation beneath that, a full explanation. <coughs> and uh, if Ed and Mike could back me up on that or explain a little further, we need to. Yeah, they've got, I mean, one thing that, uh, the two examples that are general questions, I mean, they do talk about, um, you know, general budget uh, questions, and then they had multiple departments, so that it says, uh, should the town of Town of be allowed to assess an additional 708000 in real estate personal property for the purposes of funding public safety and highway expenses? And then, I, I see where you're coming from, Dan, about, the explanation would say 
204,000 for fire, 204 for, uh, for uh, police, and 300,000 for uh, uh, public safety road improvements. So even further, what they're going to do with that money? They're going to add firefighters and pay for it, too, so they're going to uh, do theirs. Uh, DPW has a, a road improvement program that, that they've been dying to uh, implement and they need the cash draft for it. So, uh, you know my answer. We can write that. Yes, um, I need to push back a little bit. Um, it's my belief that this board should consider heavily an a la carte menu when it comes to these items. And the re one of the reasons is this, this money, this expenditure, these ideas, these needs, it's not about departments competing against one another. It's about what the voters and the taxpayers and the money that they're going to be pony up, where they want it spent and how they want it spent. And it's really up to them and, and to take it and lump it together and force the taxpayers to look and say, well, I really want more policemen, but I'm going to have to take the rest of the stuff with it in order to achieve what I'm really looking for isn't fair to them. Maybe they want more police and fire and they don't want the roads. Or maybe they want the roads and they want police and they don't want fire. They should have that opportunity. It's not about internally in, in the town and, and, and the departments competing against each other for the taxpayers' money. It's about putting it out there and saying, look, here it is. It's your vote. It's your money. You decide. So I really think that it should be three individual items. It may be presented as a budget with an override, but when it comes to the vote, they should be able to pick and choose where they want to spend the money and what money they want to spend. And I really think you should consider looking at it from that perspective because it's about the voters and about the taxpayers and about their money and where they want it to go. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to um, introduce not Mike, but Linda. Um, what we talked about before was two fireflies, which were bringing um, the shifts up to seven, four shifts of seven. Um, that was assuming, I didn't think, I didn't know Mike was there. So that was assuming um, just the addition of two, but Mike has some um, better information than I do. The yeah, I mean, um, well, obviously we're all, you know, beginning of February when I, I made mean, my first pitch. Um, two is awesome. It's a great start. It, it completes what I envisioned last year with the 50-50 uh, split with the animals. Part. Um, I said time and time again, Chief Keenan had eight in 2012, and that's where we really need to be. You know, to provide both in the Service and complete fire protection. Not complete fire protection, but a, 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 a workforce that is capable of leaving a station and doing something not like you heard a month and a half ago. Um, with that, my number my number six certainly I'm not gonna say no to two. Um, should have happened, should have happened last year, but it didn't. Um, so my number for six, if you want it. Is sitting for another hundred and sixty to another four hundred thousand dollars between uh, salaries and purchasing of protective equipment. Um, question? Um, 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 uh, different from then, I, I think the ballot is the ballot. If you, if you want it. You're going to vote for it. If you don't, you're not going to. Um, and divide it up. So we're going to have uh, myself, Rick, Ben, and Gene, and we've all made our cases for um, catching up. We've been, we've gone 15 years. So the four budgets I put in all have been level funded expense, uh, expensive ones. 
Um, not in court. Definitely on the load of repairs and equipment that's breaking in and expiring uh, now. So that's, that's a portion of it. It's only like $25,000 more. Also, it's all personnel. Town's got to grow up. Town's used to growing up, and, it, and it's got to bring its little brothers with it. Um, can't afford to be living the type we are. Question? Chief, so you're proposing six men, not two. I would like six. And what is the dollar amount on that? Six hundred? Six hundred? Mm -hmm. Six hundred. Six hundred. Six hundred. Six Six seven. Six fifty seven. So, Mr. Chairman, if the budget, the continued budget, were to include six firefighters, the total um, of the dollar question would be one million one hundred and seventy four thousand, and that would add forty six cents to the tax rate, and that would increase the average. Assessments of three hundred seventy-six thousand is tax bill um, by one hundred seventy-two dollars. Per year. Correct. Permanent. All right. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Settle down a little bit. This is what we'll, let's talk about this for a little bit. Uh, Chief. I want, to, I want to support the, all three departments, uh, police, fire, and DPW. And I definitely want to support you, and that's far from me to be able to tell you what you need for your men. That's, that's your job, that's your duty, and I'm glad to have you in that position. I also want to make sure that we can get you resources that you need, even if it's an incremental basis. So I wonder, and I just wonder what the appetite of the, of the taxpayer is, because um, with what was before us tonight to begin with, mm -hmm. seven hundred thousand. Uh, I think everyone in this room seems like can can back it up with full throat. We're with everyone, all three departments, all the way. Um, so going forward with the, the, the full department request, as we're talking about tonight, um, even if you got all the support in this room, I, I don't know where it is out there yet. Of course, I heard it, so I haven't been able to, to talk to people about it. But it just seems it just seems like there will get a lot of a lot of pushback on it, Mike. And and, and here's another part of that is what, when I when I say incremental steps, we have. We have now, through the, the, the help of a, a state grant, um, a mechanism to. Uh, and what is the term of that matrix that we're going to do? The, 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 the funding and expenditures in the town that the state is helping us with? We're going to have a presentation. Uh, it's the five year forecasting model for revenues and expenses. Okay, so the, the five year forecasting mo model for, for the revenue and the expenses. Is going, is going to be implemented and we're going to start to populate the information and we'll be able to decipher where each department is, where they were, and where they're going, so that we have a tool, something to present to taxpayers. Say, listen, I know we've been talking about this, what the department's moves are, but here it is laid out uh, for you to see. In, beyond what the, the chief has already seen himself. Uh, and that's another tool for us to help get you the program that you need in place. Uh, and I say that just for the for discussion, because it's, it's a big number, Mike, we know that. And I know that you feel that that's what you need for, for your department, for the safety of the community. And I, I want to help you, but I also don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. But I think it needs to be said tonight. I, I believe it. <laughs> Uh, is it possible? I know because of budgetary means, because of the spring and fall when we actually pay for everything. Is it possible because since it is a state election to get it to town meeting during spring, but vote on it during the primary in September? 
Is that a possibility? I don't think there is. Yes. I don't think there was exactly. Yeah, I'm sure. I think that's the vote within 90 days. days. That's had the election within 90 days. Okay. Not hundred percent certain, but I think that's okay. Okay. Yes. I mean that's another option that's, to look at if, if that is possible. Right. So everyone gets informed about it. The police chief, the fire chief can go out and say, hey, this is what we need. The W commissioners to kind of promote themselves to why this happens and what the price is going to be. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> In the long run. You know, they're looking at what? 172 taxpayer bucks per year permit. You know, that's a lot to ingest. But the school committee did the same thing when we did the override. So I just want to make sure that everyone's, I guess, aware if we're able to do it, I would say why not go for it. But it's a budgetary matter. Unfortunately, we have to go for it forthwith as of this spring meeting. It's an important decision. It's a big decision for the entire town. Um, is there is there an avenue to secure the position? Do you have to fund that? Yeah, yeah. Fund them as, a, as we move along. Um, sort of, but not because it's everything. Um, in order to add staffing on the town side, we need to have town meeting authorized positions, <laughs> but the resident office. Just a I guess my question would be if it comes and authorizes them five years down the road when it's funding, I can budget it and that wouldn't that give a point down the end For that part, you still have to go from the town meeting funding. The part of the budget already? Well, no. All right, then, you know what? <laughs> Right. Right. We have to have, by reading what I, I see here, we have to have our decision on the ballot, the language of the ballot, to the town clerk by March 27th. So on March 27th. The whole idea was if you could figure out which approach you were going to take to the warrant, whether it was going to be a contingency um, budget or if it was going to be the balanced budget, you would have a sense of how many questions and what those should look like. The town council would crunch this week and get you final drafts for next week if you had an idea of what kind of language you were looking for. Yes, in order to give it to the town clerk, you need to draw a lot of funding. All right, so I got a credit from everyone. I don't think we have any final thoughts. No, I, I fully stand in support of the really conversation about the solution, obviously. Um, that's what I wanted last year. Um, I understand 108 a year is a lot better than 174 a year. I take that just for a little bit. We will two and six down. I think the last thing we can move to. And if we move, uh, you know, other future positions, we can find a uh, future uh, meeting with the vote now. That will back off my six, but it, it should be out there. Everybody needs to know. Yeah. Seven is a great start. The other thing, shy yeah. about putting it forward, that's for sure. Yeah. So I'm trying to do my job. That's your job. Right. Right. What All right, thanks. Uh, I think that's great, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So I think we'll go ahead and. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I just ask a question? We've got the, uh, this issue about how these uh, ballot questions are going to be on the ballot itself. In other words, it's going to be uh, a menu of all in one. Now, I think the uh, chairman of the DPW strongly feels that 
we should have a manual book. He has spoken on that and given us his thoughts. Would we want to consider having the public safety items together and having the roads separate? Two ballot questions. The one for 408,000, The board can do that if they want. It's really good. As I said before, we recommend that we do the employees right now. We have to do one question. If the board's decision is yes or no. So we're, we're on that topic now, the ballot. <coughs> yeah. I, mean, I strongly uh, support single ballot questions. And I believe that that is the best way for, for, the, vote, for the voters to digest uh, what's before them. It's a ballot question, there's a single question with an explanation underneath it on the ballot itself. All three will be separate for town meeting. So the town meeting will have full uh, discussion, disclosure, and debate about each individual item. It's not, debate shouldn't happen at the ballot box. The ballot box should be the question before you, clear and plain, and it's a vote, up or down. The time for debate and discussion is at the town meeting floor, and then the information that will be provided to the public uh, leading up into the election. That's how I feel. That's how I see it, and that's the recommendation of town accountant and town administrator. Any other comments on that? Um, I'm just going to say one more time that there's no debate when the voter goes into the booth and makes their decision. The debates happen on town meeting floor. But if you put it all in one lump sum, there isn't any reason to have a debate on town meeting floor because there's, there's one lump thing there and people have to decide if they want to carry the other things that they don't want. And that's going to be the decision they're looking to make. They're not going to be making a decision whether they want more police or fire. They're going to then be making a decision whether they want to carry something that they don't want in order to get what they want. So when they go into the ballot box to vote and it's three separate items, then they're making a decision as to what they want, not what they don't want. And when you lump them together, you're forcing them to decide what they're going to carry. And that's not where the decision needs to be made. It needs to be made clearly and concisely across the board. And like I said, it's not, it's not employees competing with each other for money. It's about what the taxpayers and the voters want. And in terms of the rates that we're talking about, the hundred and, what was it, hundred and sixty dollars per three hundred seventy five thousand dollar assessment? One hundred and five. One hundred and five. The reality there, the reality is most people's assessment is probably above the three seventy five. So the hundred and five is really a hundred and twenty five or a hundred and fifty. And and maybe in some cases with some of the more expensive homes in town, it could be up to a hundred and eighty or ninety dollars. So given the magnitude of the money and the reality of what it really is, they should be picking and choosing from an a la carte menu and deciding how much they really want to stick on their taxes and what they really want and not what they have to carry in order to get what they want. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, I've heard Ben's argument, of course, I've heard Dan's position, the town administrator's position, and Mike Buckley's position on this. I personally think that the public safety questions are obvious to people. We need more police support for many reasons, and we certainly need more firemen to handle the obligations that the chief has. I personally think the roads are in the same category. That's all we hear is how terrible the roads in Pembroke are. And I'm not talking about Baca Street. That's a whole separate issue that 
we have no control over. That'll be finished maybe in a year. But that's not what we're talking about, this $300,000 for. Oh, my thought is that all three are equally as important, but certainly in different ways. And uh, you may not think that a smooth road is important as having enough firemen that will respond to you. But I think the problems in each of those three areas are pretty much the same. We've neglected this too long. So I think I will uh, join uh, Dan's issues that he's put forth. And uh, let's do a good job of explaining this. That'll be a town meeting floor. And uh, one ballot question for all three. They're equally as important in my view. I did, and um, will you be disappointed because I would so agree with you that as far as public safety and roads, it's uh, a fair compromise to uh, get a uh, final decision made. But uh, if you were going to withdraw that, I will uh, side with Dan as well and uh, go for uh, one. Question. I'm not uh, divided the All right, I think it's good on that. I just want to just one last thing, if I could. And it's, it, as Mike said, it's, uh, there's no wrong answer here. Uh, there, there are a lot of right answers. And it, it, what, what I propose, and, and I'm happy that you folks uh, agree. It's just a philosophy that I believe in that I think is best for us, uh, for the world going to the ballot box. Well, we all want this to be heard and heard clearly and loudly and uh, outside of town meeting as well. So that when people go to the ballot box and they see this, they're going to know what it's all about and how important it is to vote for. Now, the floor and make a decision on the ballot. We see a uh, fire person on the top piece. We need to make a decision on which budget option we'll be moving forward with. And so, does anybody have a motion on that? Mr. Chairman, I move that we use the second example. Uh, multiple departmental purposes with allocation to the town of Pembroke be allowed to assess an additional seven hundred eight thousand dollars in real estate and personal property for the purposes of funding public safety and highway expen expenses for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well, so that passes unanimously. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I also uh, move to have the town administrator uh, draw up a draft, a, a draft explanation of this to be printed on the ballot uh, underneath the ballot question uh, with the assistance of the Board of Selectmen, the approval of the Board of Selectmen. Second. All right, so we have a motion and a second on there as well. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I vote aye as well. Let's pass the hearing as well. I'll move on to the next board action item. This is the ballot on the cart versus menu option. Just, we just worked on that. Did you approve? They voted on the question, not the budget. Right. Do you want budget? Oh, so you, you took it out of the board. Move back on to the first one. Right. We have two budget options before us. Um, financial budget. This is a technical budget. This budget recommendation by Thorne and Mike Buckley that they support option one. That's my little thing you as well. Any final questions before we take a vote? 
Like you were suggesting that we go with the second column, the contingent budget. Correct. I think the meeting would be more or less better with the all of the budget items all at once. As opposed to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. As opposed to Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I would move that the board vote to take the recommendation uh, that we have heard tonight and go with the contingent budget plan that's before us. Second. All right, got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote as well. So that passes unanimously. Very good. Moving on, there are eight articles being submitted for a recommendation. The board selects a budget, so the board can make the recommendation on Article 3 as well. I was going to say, Article 3 isn't currently in there because we just discussed it. It's the budget that you just moved and voted. Right. So if that's all set, we can move right on to Article 4. Moving on to Article 4 is the Fund the Water Enterprise Fund. Second. Article 5 is the Fund Solid Waste Enterprise Fund. Okay, we'll Second. <laughs> <laughs> Two seconds. Two seconds. Three seconds. Three seconds. Three seconds. Article 7 is to amend bylaws to authorize revolving. This action is recommended to modernize the municipal government revolving fund. It will be authorized by bylaw, but annual funding limits will remain in the annual plan. This is the Favorable action. Second. So a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I vote as well, so it's passed unanimously. Moving on to Article 8, authorize revolving fund limits. This is routine. Move Article 8, favorable action. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote as well, so it's passed unanimously. In the last article, Article 9 is to allow the Board of Selectmen to contract the Mass Department of Transportation to this region. Move favorable action. Second. Is there a motion and a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, I vote as well. Then. Mr. Chairman, did I miss Article 6? Did we do? Did we read Article 6? You right? did Article 6. You did. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's one of the both. Move in the oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I should remember that one. <laughs> All right, the last action item the town administrator will present information regarding recent electricity rates available to those municipal aggregation programs. 
Yeah, Mr. Chairman, as you may remember, uh, the town met with the uh, representatives for several towns regarding uh, the old colony planning council for municipal transportation plan. And I want to just find out an update on the program. They all decided to die. Um, we were on a conference call uh, last week regarding this proposal by um, the uh, Colonial Power, who's doing the, um, the, the work for the various towns on this municipal aggregation plan. And uh, if you look at the chart that I just handed out, if you look in the upper right hand column, this is the supplier rate that people in Pembroke are paying to National Grid. Now, your electric bill is broken up into two parts, a supplier rate that this program has control over and the distribution rate, um, which the, the uh, resident does not have any control over. So in the case of Pembroke, the person in, in, in our town is paying point one two one two six seven three per kilowatt hour and the proposal right now which is incredible because it's a real low rate but it's also a green product where these green products whether it's wind or uh, hydro um, normally is higher than uh, rates that are supplied by fossil fuel so anyway right now the proposal is point uh, zero nine five five four, and if you look at in your packet, you have a chart which shows what the current rate would be for three homes. Home A, which averages three hundred and seventy-five kilowatt hours a month, and then you have Home B, who is total electric. So. And the high rent, you could have, you could be using 3,600 kilowatt hours a month, and as low as 228, and that would be an average of 1428. This is a this is a housing unit that is total electric. I know because this is my bill showing you folks right now, so I'm not making that up. And then Home C is another uh, community, another home that's in. The same community that has a uh, a wood stove, so their electric bills, you know, don't vary as much as the one that's totally electrical. And you can see what that what the current rate would be and what the homeowner would be paying for the supplier, and what this proposed rate and what the savings would be. So uh, basically, um, the conference call is going to be held this Thursday. Um, Nick Sakella, who's the chairman of the Energy Committee, and I uh, have talked about this, and we know that this is a short window. And we would recommend to the board that the town enter into this program only if that rate of uh, 0.09554 was in effect. Anything higher than that, I, we would suggest that the selectmen that we don't enter that program and hold off a couple more months to see if, if we can get a rate. I don't think, if, if you look at all the other rates that have been um, uh, bid on by the other suppliers, you can see that nobody is near, nobody touches the rate that is under 0.10. So, um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even have brought this up uh, with the exception of the fact that that rate is so low and the savings to the resident in Pembroke would be uh, pretty pretty good because the rate fluctuates every six months. And, that, and that's why we chose not to jump into the program uh, last fall. Well, that is very good savings. Um, you know, I have a question. Um, the rate that uh, that they have quoted, if, if we decided to go with this as a town, is this for a period of 18 months? Correct. 
So it stays the same for 18, 18 months. months. Uh, having reviewed this, <clears throat> I took the opportunity to take a look at uh, my electric bill for the first three months of this year. I don't have national grid. I'm not buying by electricity from them. It's another uh, company. And uh, the rate I have is 0 0.109. And uh, so if I switch to the 0 0.09554 here, uh, I would save a little over $5 a month. If the average rate for three months stayed the same, which I know it's going to go up, but depending on the time of the year. I don't have electric heat. So I personally would save money if we went with this. And, it, and as I mentioned a few times before, you'll get a notice in the, in the, uh, in, uh, in the mail, and in it will be um, a postcard with an, a self address envelope, and you can opt out of the plan if you so desire. And you can opt out anytime you want. Now there's probably about a 30 day lag period, but you know, you can get in or you can get out at any time during the 18 months that we're in the plan. Like I said, the only reason I brought this up is because this rate is incredibly low. In fact, uh, in Plymouth, you know, I pay point one oh three three three. So this would be even a, a, a better deal than what the residents in Plymouth are getting. And like I said, Nick and I would not have brought this before the board uh, if we didn't think that this was a rate that we haven't seen in in the year and a half that we've been looking at this project. Mr. Chairman, I move to authorize the town administrator and chairman of the energy committee to enter into an agreement to purchase power for 0 0.09554 as bid, uh, which is shown before us. Second. All right. And if that and if that goes up, then we we will pull the trigger on on, on joining the board. That's the higher high number. Okay. So the motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none. I vote aye as well. So this passes unanimously. Okay. Seems to pass clear as well. Moving on to old business. Mr. Boulder, estimated the record of March 6, 2018, whereby he reports that on that day he personally reviewed eight accounts payable. Warrants for nine hundred and seven thousand five hundred and eighty seven dollars thirteen cents. Two payroll warrants for one million two hundred and twenty eight thousand five hundred and twenty three dollars and sixty eight cents as prepared by the town accountant. The authorized and authorized the itemized expenditures for payment. Do we have a motion to accept the report? So move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Hearing none, I vote aye as well. This passes unanimously. Moving on to the <coughs> administrative report. Uh, one quick uh, item. Um, I'll be attending uh, the uh, Old Colony Planning Council uh, MPO meeting tomorrow doing the transportation projects. And the reason I'll be there is that there will be an update from Mass DOT about the Pleasant Street Route 53 traffic signal. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I make a comment on that announcement? Sure. I uh, have in the Boston Globe, uh, there's an ad uh, posted as required, putting out for bid various proposals from Mass TOT. And uh, this one includes Pembroke. And they are advertising for related work at the Washington Street Route 53 and Pleasant Streets. And the projected value of that project is $1,778,000. So that uh, bid is officially out. 
hecho. A ver, ya que te agarraste, un candidato de mejor. Si no van, si has un selection. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have uh, an issue. Uh, we received a letter from a gentleman in Pembroke who wanted to tell the Board of Selectmen that he is not happy with the fact that Verizon uh, does not want to come to Pembroke. And he wants the Selectmen to do something about it. Uh, he also states that he knows that we have, over the years, had people from Verizon in and ask them why they don't want to come into Pembroke. <coughs> well, he contacted, according to this letter, the gentleman that had come in before us. And um, he asked him the question, why won't Verizon expand services to Pembroke? And the answer that he got was, quote, Verizon does not have plans to expand files to new communities at this time and is focusing on completing the build-out of the files network where we have contractual obligations through licenses. These local franchise agreements are provisioned upon offering files to the entire community within a stated period of time. So, having gotten that answer personally, the gentleman is asking us to consider revisiting this issue with Verizon to see if there are any other options. So, as we all know, we, we answer every uh, letter, phone call, email addressed to ask the selectman. That's the purpose of it. So, um, I don't see any reason why I would recommend we contact Verizon on this issue. We've already done so. He's got the same answer that we got. They're not coming to Pembroke, folks, and there's nothing we can do about it. So, unless uh, the board uh, would think it would be the right thing to do to have them come in, um, I would, uh, I would answer the gentleman and tell him that we have our answer. He has the same answer. I don't know what else we can do. I certainly agree with that. Seems like he's already happy with the summarizing. Nothing we can do about that. So Stan uses it to within representing the Verizon as well as Mayor of Salem. So he understands how things in the municipalities work. And he was totally <coughs> without commitment, I guess it would be the best thing Dan would remember. Uh, he, he told us that the expense to build out, particularly in the Bryantville side of town, with all the old equipment and old wiring, would be astronomical given the distances of some of the lots and things. That they have to make it available to every one of us and no one uh, by contract. So while my heart is with the gentleman, uh, my head says that we've already visited this on two or three occasions and we got the same answer and the um, first sign of leaving it is that we keep doing the same thing over and over again. And uh, I, I don't see the possibility of us getting fired this year. If he wants to set up a meeting with Mr. Yusevich on you know, some you know, weekday or something like that, I'd be happy to call him and see if he'd come visit us again, but I think the answer is still going to be the same. See, it's, it's really a business decision. Infrastructure is very, very expensive, as you alluded to. The, the wires, uh, the, the pole leases, uh, it's, it's a tremendous expenditure uh, that, that they don't need to lay out right now. And another part of that, of the same equation, though not coming here to Pembroke and other communities, is that the technology is changing so fast after spending that tremendous amount of money on new infrastructure, when the technology changes, which they know it's going to in the next five, 10 years, they just put in a, a 50 year system that's gonna change in 10 years. So it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't make business sense to do that. And the town is already being served by Comcast. You know, other than, other than a price war between two cable companies, when's the last time you've seen that? Hasn't happened. But what benefit does the town get? You're still getting cable, whether it's Comcast, 
the horizon. So what's the game? And the way corporate the corporates have been corporations have been merging, uh, Comcast and Verizon probably won't get there in the next three months. Who knows? I don't think we should waste Verizon's time uh, unless someone wants to make it a, a, a single phone call from a single select. Mm -hmm. All right, I got an address to be on to new business. Hearing none, we have the upcoming issues. That's on April 2nd at 7 p.m. I'm Plymouth County Treasurer Tom O'Brien for a Plymouth County retirement discussion. On April 9th at 7 p.m., the Town Government Study Committee regarding Warren Articles. On April 23rd. Oh, excuse me, could you back up a second? Uh, is that April 9th for the Town Government Study Committee? Uh, could they also be penciled in for April 2nd? Of course. Uh, there's a chance the committee would prefer to be here the second. Of course. Thank you. Okay. On April 2nd, we will also have the Town Government Study Committee. On April 23rd, we will be signing the Town Meeting Warrants. April 30th, we will be hosting the Advisory Committee Final Presentation. On May 8th, there will be an annual Town Meeting. May 12th, the annual Town Election. Many things happen. Lastly, do we have a need for Session. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move that the board go into executive session to discuss strategy with respect to litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body. And the chair so declares River Marsh, Potter Street, MH 916. All right, so we declare the board will not adjourn open session at this evening of executive session. Having been a second, I will call for a roll call vote. Yes. 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 I yeah, vote well, yes as well. I'm now moving to executive session. This public meeting is concluded. Thank you for tuning in. Oh yeah? Oh, no.
Thank you. 